So the basic foundation of metaphysics is you are not your body. You are a soul inhabiting your body. The physical world did not just create itself, it was created from the spiritual worlds. So what happens though, we kind of get mesmerized by the physical world and we think we are physical beings. The Hindu mystics would call this the world of Maya. You're living in the world of illusion. Not that the world is illusory, but when we think the five physical senses is all there is to perception, that's an illusion. Welcome, dear listeners, to another enlightening episode of the Mindfulness Experience Podcast, where we embark on a journey of spiritual understanding and personal transformation. I'm your host, Keith Fiveson, and today we are honored to be joined by Dimitri Moraitis. Did I have that right, Dimitri? I think so. Uh, he's the co-founder and spiritual co spiritual director of the Spiritual Arts Institute, and Dimitri has been really instrumental in shaping the Spiritual Arts Institute into the premier metaphysical stool that it is today, along with his co-author and partner, Barbara Y. Martin. Together, they have authored international bestsellers, including Change Your Aura, Change Your Life, Communing with the Divine, and Karma and Reincarnation, which I'm really interested in talking about. And uh, he's going to provide us with some really profound insights into spiritual evolution. So without further ado, let's welcome Dimitri. Dimitri, hi. Hey, hey thank you for having me on your show. It's a hey, pleasure. Hey, 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 <laughs> I am so excited to have you here and so yeah. excited to talk about this subject of spirituality and what does yeah. spirituality mean so i really uh, want to get into that with you if you're okay with that uh Absolutely. what do you think we can dive yeah, into let's it? Do yeah. it let's do it all right good <laughs> <laughs> so so i know you I, I i looking at your bio it's incredibly yeah. impressive you've got a career in motion pictures to co-founding the spiritual right. arts institute and it's really fascinating uh, and I'm wondering if you can share with our listeners perhaps a pivotal moment of your spiritual awakening, if you will, and what yeah. really led you to embark on the path of metaphysics. Maybe we can unpack what metaphysics is. Right, 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 right. I know a lot of words are thrown out there right now. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. We all have our turning point, right? For mm -hmm. some people, it's gradual over time. They, some say, oh, gosh, I was born interested from a little kid. I was fascinated by all of this. Um, but for me, it was definitely a turning point. As you mentioned, I was interested in movies and television, and I was also a classical pianist. And uh, so arts was very much my mm -hmm. life, you know, and, um, you know, had a good upbringing. And I went to Los Angeles to, you know, that's where you find your fame and fortune in movies <laughs> is Los Angeles, right. you know, and um, it was actually going well. I, I was having though these, uh, at the time, again, I didn't even know what the word metaphysics was. So mm. I was having these, I just call them sort of my inspiration moments. Mm -hmm. These are moments of heightened insight and clarity. Uh, you know, I was very, no, no, uh, you know, unbalanced or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, but it kind of came like the wind and it left like the wind. I have absolutely mm -hmm. no control over it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in the arts, you're you're kind of already tuned into that mm -hmm. thing you can't put your finger on, right? So again, I just thought that was part of the process, but it got so strong, I eventually had a, an undeniable spiritual awakening. But mm. even at that moment, I didn't have a name for it. Someone mm -hmm. said, oh, you had a religious experience. Mm. So it didn't feel quite like that. And then when I did hear mm -hmm. the word metaphysics, they said, bingo, that's it, you mm -hmm. know? And I couldn't get enough of it. Uh, again, living in Los Angeles, there is a lot of opportunity to research and find mm -hmm. out about it. So, I mean, I was literally blocks mm -hmm. away from the mm -hmm. Manly Hall Philosophical Research Society, you know. Mm -hmm. So, that was the first place I went to buy some books on it. Mm -hmm. um, but I was careful about joining a group. And I, I, I had a girlfriend at the time, and, you know, I mm -hmm. couldn't stop talking about it. So, um, you know, she said, oh, there's this woman that's going to do this meditation at this dinner I'm going to. Do you want to join? And I thought, OK, I'll go. Um, 
and it was Barbara, you know, and, and Barbara's a, a generation older than me. And mm -hmm. she led a meditation it was the first time I meditated. Mm -hmm. And it was literally like feeling that ancient door opening again. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, I, I guess I felt very comfortable talking to her. I had all these questions and mm -hmm. I thought we were having a great conversation. She said afterwards, boy, you really interrogated me that first night, you know, <laughs> but I really wanted to know. And after a while, I'm realizing, you know what? She's talking from her own experiences. You know, especially mm -hmm. when we're talking about the other side and mm -hmm. oh my God. And, and I realized by the end of the night, this is the one I have to study with. So mm -hmm. I became a student right away. Um, but it was such a, we also realized we both like to write. So we became writers, but mm -hmm. I started to realize pretty soon I was trying to do both worlds, but I, I began to realize, you know what? This is my destiny. Mm -hmm. I'm meant to be in metaphysics, mm -hmm. not in movies. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. is what, what is metaphysics? I mean, is it is it because you know we uh, one of the things I'm aware of when we talk about meditation or um, you know even mindfulness, a lot of people think it's really woo woo, and yeah. you know it's just yeah. sort of this other thing. I mean, what is your uh, perspective? Well, what is metaphysics? Yeah. Yeah. Literally, metaphysics mm -hmm. means after physics. Mm -hmm. So what it's trying to do is it's trying to show the spiritual roots of physical life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the basic okay. foundation of metaphysics is you are not your body. Mm -hmm. You are a soul inhabiting your body. Mm -hmm. The physical world did not just create itself. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. created from the spiritual worlds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what happens though, we kind of get mesmerized by the physical world and we think we are physical beings. Mm -hmm. The Hindu mystics would call this the world of Maya. Mm -hmm. You're living right. in the world of illusion. Not right. that the world is illusory, but when we think the five physical senses is all there is to perception, mm -hmm. that's an illusion, right? Mm -hmm. That we have to wake up from. So the idea of meditation and spiritual pursuits is to discover that inner life mm -hmm. from your own experience. Now, you may start by following an instruction or something, but in the end, it's got to be you experiencing this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then also understanding how this is connected to the outer life. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, we, we used to have classes, some were saying, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know how much time to dedicate to my spiritual life, how much time to dedicate to my earth life. And we'd say, well, you've already divided the house. Mm -hmm. It's not physical and spiritual. It's all spiritual. Mm -hmm. So when and I when look at, so when I look at metaphysics and I want to break that word down, you know, meta meaning the mind uh, uh, or meta, M-E-T-T-A, which could mean loving kindness, right? Physics being- Well, no, it, it, it comes from Aristotle where literally he was talking about after physics. It, after so, physics, okay, after. so it's beyond yeah. physics. So from a yeah. quantum physics perspective, a lot of people will say, you know, quantum physics really is about you, your projection, you being able to project reality into the world, in other words, whatever you're experiencing on the internal side, you can create in the external side, but you're talking about more than that. Yeah. You're talking about exactly. otherworldly, exactly. otherworldly experience. Well, yeah. the way to think of it, another way to think of it. So look, mm -hmm. we're understanding more about the mm -hmm. atom, you know, the physical world, right? But the physical world, even on the quantum level is still the physical spectrum of life. Right. It's just, we're understanding that spectrum in a lot more detail. Mm -hmm. Again, the Indians have a great word for it. They call it prakriti, right? Mm -hmm. The primordial material out of which the physical world is made of. But even they teach, you're supposed to surmount prakriti. You're, su you're mm -hmm. supposed to go beyond it. So just like there's a visible light spectrum, you know, mm -hmm. how we see each other physically right now, that's right. just a pretty part of the Just a spectrum. small part of it, yeah. So yeah. If, we, if we think of the spectrum of life, mm -hmm. the physical is one part, but there's other dimensions. It's not woo-woo or... Uh, it's just as much a part of life as we are. Helena Blavatsky, the great mystic, had a great saying. She would say, spirit is matter operating at its highest frequency, and matter is spirit operating at its lowest frequency. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's all part of the same spectrum, mm -hmm. but these are operating differently, and we have to understand the total us, who we totally are as a, mm -hmm. as a spiritual being, if we want to be successful in our life here. Mm. Well, I like this word spirit and I use, uh, I've talked about it on the show before because the, you know, specifically as it relates to breath, you know, we do a lot of breath work, mindfulness work and breath work is really about, you know, the root word, the Latin root word for breath, as you know, is spir, S-P-I-R as in inspire, aspire, respire, mm -hmm. expire, 
you know, without our, with every, every, everything is centered on the breath. And when we start moving into the world of breath, we know that there's energy there. There's energy right. in the breath right. we take in. There's energy as we let go of that breath. You know, there's a wonderful sigh in terms of releasing stress. You know, there's other areas. So I'm wondering from your perspective, when we look at metaphysics, how much of this is involved in breath work? How much is it involved in intention? We started right. talking about intention right. before uh, the show started. I'm, I'm, I'm really kind of wondering your view of yeah, that. Yeah, well, you know, what is breath? It's an exchange, right? Um, mm -hmm. I love the American Indian uh, was a teaching. I may be paraphrasing it slightly, mm -hmm. but you know, we breathe out, the trees breathe in. Mm -hmm. Trees breathe out we breathe in mm -hmm. so there's this exchange going on right there's there's gases coming in gases going out but yes there is also prana going into the body mm -hmm. so there it through the through the breath especially when there is a mindfulness behind it and mm -hmm. it isn't just i'm trying to get oxygen um you are it is another way of connecting with the spirit life because mm -hmm. we speak of the holy breath that god created the universe through breath Mm -hmm. you know right and, and it's, uh, um, it's the holy yeah. trinity right yeah. the, so the yeah, father so son and the holy spirit yeah. it's yeah. a very breathing on a spiritual dimension is uh we even say in our light work the light comes in through the holy breath you know mm -hmm. so yes and how you breathe and the again it, now the intention is important because the mind is the navigator of the soul so where we direct our consciousness that's where we're going, you know. So mm -hmm. I like to right. think of it. Okay, if our, if our soul, if if our body's like a ship on the sea, mm -hmm. and our soul are like the people on the ship, well, our mind is the captain. Our mind is the navigator. Where the where the where the <laughs> captain yeah. says, okay, we're going this way. That's where we're going. Right. So if you haven't, if you're pursuing something with a sense of intention, mm -hmm. then there is a co-creative part of this. You're you're feeling you're part of the creative process mm -hmm. of life not a passive bystander and mm -hmm. then of course again you're going to be more creative and more expressive right so intention is the rudder of the ship so to speak and that'll and what you think about you bring about where you know energy where your mind goes or where your thoughts go energy flows yeah Within yeah the, the mind concept. is incredible you know in most mystical traditions mm -hmm. a tremendous amount of energy was placed on the development of the mind mm -hmm. because if you don't have that mind razor sharp Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be hard to do this navigating, you know, right. and the ability to concentrate. We have some when they start the, our our, med, our classes and say, well, you know, I, I have a hard time concentrating. Well, the mind is like a muscle. So if you're mm -hmm. saying I can't lift more than 10 pounds, well, OK, today you can't lift more than 10. Mm -hmm. But if you keep exercising, you're going to lift more. Well, if you start training the mind to discipline it, many of us have the monkey mind. Mm -hmm. And right now we're so inundated with information, we don't know what to shut off and let in. We have to clear all that so that right. the mind is still and centered and you are in control of your mind and thoughts, mm -hmm. not your thoughts in control of you. Well, well, you know, I have so many questions to ask you, but I, I, I want to stay where we are for the moment. Okay. Yeah, uh, because I, I want to get into the concept of the monkey mind and more specifically about what people what keeps people from being razor sharp or present and in my work you know one of the reasons i was talking with someone earlier about mindfulness about the ability to uh, recognize and choose uh their paths and mm -hmm. that that's really the purpose of mindfulness is to have recognition and choice right because everyone would like to be able to recognize um you know what is taking them off of that path right what's, taking, right. what's veering them away and in our trauma-ridden society because we are trauma-based there is a um a lot of um if you will uh hijacking uh, you know it, it would be emotional hijacking or or amygdala hijacking where individuals move into fight flight freeze or fawn and i'm wondering uh when you look at your work how do you how do you approach individuals who have had a lot of trauma in their lives 
And, you know, I mean, I'm also involved in the psychedelics area where, you know, people are getting breakthroughs or, you know, uh, 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 being able to step away from their own vehicle to see their traumas and then heal their traumas. But that's still not enough, right? They still need to activate and bring it into their lives, which is where mindfulness comes in. I'm wondering in your work, what does that look like? Because a lot of people can do a uh, spiritual uh, bypass. You know, and that's no, that's no, no. it's a thing. great question. Um, I have to say, one of the areas I think we've seen the most successes in what you're describing mm -hmm. right now. Um, you know, uh, what we have to realize is a traumatic experience is just that it's an experience, it's not an identity, mm -hmm. it's not who you are. So, you want to be careful that you're not identifying yourself with your experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, you are that immortal spark of life. You are that precious divine soul. Sometimes we go through dark nights of the soul. It's all, it's part of the human experience. We all go through it at different points in our life, you know, where it seems like, you know, we're in the deep of night and we are at that moment. But ironically, what do they say when you're standing at the abyss and it feels like nothing is supporting you? What is there? It's you. Right. You're right. seeing you kind of bare and you're seeing yourself as you really are. And that's the test. Also, each of us have to go through, um, you know, we talk about uh, suffering and things like that. Uh, the story of Job, right, in the Bible, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. righteous person that went through all this suffering. Well, again, I'm quoting people here a little bit today. You know, Helen Vavatsky just said it in a sentence. Mm -hmm. That's the story of initiation par excellence. Mm -hmm. So we have to go through these trials, you know, in, the, in that saying, he says, that which I feared most has come upon me. Mm -hmm. So when we face our deepest fears, when we face the things that have challenged us the greatest, and we come out the other side, mm -hmm. then we have truly succeeded. But the first step is to realize we can come out the other side. It may take some time. These mm -hmm. things get buried sometimes. Now, again, we work a lot with the auric field. Mm -hmm. So these traumas can kind of show up in the aura. They especially go into the subconscious mind, the memory, these, um, you know, right. like post-traumatic stress. Yep, yep, yep. Implicit, battle, implicit right? memory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, but the thing we, we, we don't always realize is, okay, let's say if I went through a horrible battle and I survived it, okay, I'm not in the battle now, right? Mm -hmm. But the memory of it, when it pops up, mm -hmm. the right. body is not distinguishing between actually right. literally being there and not. So it's like you're in the battlefield all over again, right? right. When there was the 9-11 and the, we were seeing the towers coming down, I was reading, they had to stop because little children didn't realize it was the same image. Every time they saw the tower falling down, they thought it was another building falling down mm -hmm. and, and it was adding trauma on top, you know, it was compounding right. it, right. you know? Right. So it's our attitude now, you can work with spiritual energy to try to release this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just try to give a very brief mm -hmm. thing here. And this is the beginning of my own work with Barbara. I did a lot of work helping her in healing. And there was a woman that came in one of our healing circles. And I just sure I never felt the energy like that before mm -hmm. helping her out. Never. I mean, like a bolt of lightning and she burst into tears. It was just a remarkable experience. Mm -hmm kind of a, a a thing for me but later i we discovered when we were helping her counsel she'd been through probably at least at, up to that point by far the worst hmm. sexual abuse of a child that i ever heard in my life hmm. i just hmm. couldn't imagine that could happen to a child hmm. right mm -hmm. so um uh and she to deal with it she eventually um you know just put it out of her mind she had amnesia she forgot it she submerged that the whole thing right. happened right she ran away from home mm -hmm. uh when we met her, she she had been working at a mortuary. <laughs> Not mm. that it's wow, 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 wow! But she wow. was having these these um, you know, depression. She couldn't figure out what it was. Again, sure. the memory was submerged. Mm -hmm. She went to a psychiatrist. The psychiatrist brought it out, but she couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. So she tried to commit suicide. Right. right. Thank God she failed. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and then it wasn't until she started working with the light to go in there. Mm. that she's actually able to start to heal all these old things and she had a gorgeous voice i mean there was a lot of talent mm. all these things there but she found herself 
and then she was able to get married and she got her life back you mm -hmm. know and you know i my father was a very good psychiatrist so you know i i knew this world very well mm -hmm. seeing where certain types of therapy like you say could only take you so far right. but then there are other more getting deeper into the spiritual really actually turn the keys mm. so she could start to put this behind her, you mm. know you know. So I so I really like uh, what you say, uh, and I want to sort of unpack it in terms of my uh, understanding of it. So what I hear you saying is that, you know, we're not talking about spiritual bypass, which is somehow believing in something else, which is not necessarily uh, at the root cause of my trauma. What we're really talking about is using your own spiritual tools, your own, whether or not it's breathing or light work or being able to understand that you yourself are not the trauma and that you yourself can go inside, perhaps with the help of a teacher or some co-facilitator or someone who is a witness to you to help you to yeah. use that meta, use that loving kindness, use that healing light to <clears throat> bring to the surface, go into the dark, and use the light to bring that to the surface to then apply the loving kindness that you need to own own your story yeah and heal from it and heal from it yeah again absolutely. heal from it to put it behind you yeah make it a thing of the past yeah. you know not not a memory that's still haunt but exactly yeah. right you you have to know metaphysics is not a uh we tell people, look, are, these meditations are not a genie. They're not a magic wand. They're not going to make right. you suddenly. They're not a, by pro, a bypassing the normal growth mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. You have to go through all of it. Right. But when you have these tools, like you're describing, you can go through it more successfully mm -hmm. and with your chances of sustaining success more fully. A very simple one here. Why not so simple for her? Uh, uh, one of our ladies in her classes, she had... Well, after what we just heard the other day, I can understand it. She had a physical fear of crossing over bridges, right? <laughs> right. I mean, palpable fear, mm -hmm. right? Crossing a bridge. Mm -hmm. And to get to work, God bless her, she had to cross three bridges, mm -hmm. right? So she was in therapy for for years and mm -hmm. still couldn't get over this fear, right? And you know, it wasn't like a month or two of the light work. It was, I think, more like six months or more. Mm -hmm. It took a little while. But one day she said, she reported, I went to work. And I forgot I'd even crossed over three bridges. Mm, mm -hmm. It was a non-issue. Non-event, yeah. That's what's healed. When that thing becomes a non-issue in your life, mm -hmm. right. and you can say, yeah, one time I had these fear of bridges. I couldn't even, I was like hyperventilating when I got right. near, you know, and now I don't even, it's just like I'm driving. Right, right. You know, it's you so know. it's so funny, Dimitri, what you're saying, and so poignant in another way, because I want to normalize it in terms of the conversation i talk about change your story change your life right you know because if you if you can if you can make those implicit memories explicit and then you can offer the narrative around it and then just accept the narrative right then you can move forward and you're talking about it in terms of being able to bring out that heavy that heaviness out of it and really move into the light literally the light of the light yeah, well, there are, the you know, the thing yeah. is, in our aura, there are unenlightened energies. Right. Okay, it's not all rosy in that aura, mm -hmm. unfortunately, you know. Mm -hmm. So let's say if I'm in a fear state, I'm going to have this gray in my aura. I have to get rid of that fear, mm -hmm. but I also have to replace it. Mm -hmm. So I need courage, right? Why mm -hmm. am I afraid? What is holding me back? Why don't I ask that person out for a date? Or why don't I ask for that job over there? Why am I? It's I want it. I think it's a good fit. Mm. But my my fear gets in the way of me, right? right? So right. there's a lesson there, you know. So the other part we talk about Earth is a school. Mm. If the soul is immortal, if the soul is non-material, what is it doing in the material world? Right. Well, right. it's learning and growing. It's yeah. through these experiences, it's learning and growing. And the other thing is, don't be afraid to make mistakes, for God's sakes. Right. Sometimes we're we're condemning ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right right oh yeah. god I'll we can be our worst before. our own yeah. worst critic yeah, yeah certainly exactly. our, yeah, now, the one thing the divine has shared with us don't worry about making mistakes but we have seen you make the same mistake mm -hmm. 20 30 times so right. when 
not learning from our mistakes, that's when things start to feel miserable. Mm. Because mm-hmm. then we start to feel, uh, we start to get discouraged, like, ah, nah, this is just the way it is. No, it isn't. It's because you're not trying hard enough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't settle. It's it's right. a weird human thing that sometimes we get comfortable in our miseries. Mm-hmm. And we need someone to kind of poke us. Right. If I don't have my misery, then who am I? Yeah, yeah exactly. Right? I mean, you know, it's a and, friend. It's a strange friend, yeah, but it's yeah, a friend nevertheless. Yeah. yeah, you know, and Dimitri, you talk about aura. I, I, I know you, you have a groundbreaking work. You know, you have this work, change your aura, change your life. And it's a groundbreaking work that really has touched a lot of lives. I'm wondering, how does understanding and working with your aura really contribute to spiritual growth and well-being? What is, you know, what is that? What is that? Yeah. Well, the aura is the fuel of your evolution. Mm -hmm. The most precious thing you possess is your your light. So like, okay, just so we, we back up a little bit, let's back it up. So... I have been, you know, to, I've, I've had my aura done and I know your auras can change and people have different auras and some, there's an electro, I don't know what the machine is called that, I don't know if that's. Yeah, those are, those are not accurate. Those no. aren't accurate. So no. what, so what, tell us about it's what is an aura. What is an aura? That, see, yeah. we got to remember the aura is not physical. If it okay. was, my clients would have discovered it a long time yeah, They go into the machine and they could figure it out. But yeah. that's not a, you know, uh, yeah, that's. We met the originator of that, and yeah. he finally confessed to us it's a spectrometer. That's it's a spectrometer. It. Yeah. Okay, it's all like right. kind of like a fancy mood ring. <laughs> Got it. Okay. All right. So, so tell us a little bit about auras, and tell us a yeah. little bit about how do you change your aura and change your life? Right. Right. So the aura is the energetic blueprint of the soul. Mm-hmm. Everything you're, everything you're thinking right now, feeling your career, your fine, it's all showing up in your auric field. It's not mm-hmm. like you're a green, I'm a blue. Mm-hmm. The aura is more complicated than the human body. Mm-hmm. There's a lot going on there. Now, it's the foundation of everything. So if you want to generate anything in your life, mm-hmm. you need power to do it. Mm-hmm. And the power you do it, you start is in your aura. I'll give you a very simple example of this. So when I was first met Barbara, I was still in the showbiz world. Mm-hmm. And again, I was young. I was still in my 20s, you know, and uh, at that point, you know, sometimes, uh, especially in the creative side, it's a uh, feast or famine. You're working all the time doing something mm-hmm. or you're not working at all. Right. Right. So I was in that mode where I wasn't working one day and Barbara, for all her talent, she's so understated sometimes when she speaks. She casually looked, at, you know, the, referred me. Oh, I see this beautiful Turk. She was looking at my heart chakra. She sees, I, I see this beautiful turquoise light coming out of you, which is the energy of prosperity. Mm-hmm. Now, at that moment, it wasn't there. But two weeks later, literally two weeks later, I got the the most lucrative offer in the business I'd ever gotten up to that point. Mm. Mm. Okay. So the energy of that, and I was making efforts, but the energy, until it gets there, mm-hmm. it's not going to show up. One of the divine laws is if it's in your aura, it will show up in your life. Mm. So what you want to do, don't be, oh, why is that person so successful? You know, you don't want to you know, commiserate your your troubles again. Right. Yeah. If you see somebody is in a position that you would like to be in, mm-hmm. I would like to have that kind of wealth or that kind of power, whatever it is, um, work towards it. You know, use them as an example, not they just got the lucky end of the lollipop. Right. Right. Or the, yeah. You know. mm-hmm. yeah. And then that's that's the key. And the two ways you do it, number one, every good word, thought, act, and deed. So Everything you do really does matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if you're not getting the gold star, if you aren't getting the pat on the back, if you help that person and they benefited, even if they don't thank you for it, oh, I, I did all that for them, they didn't even say thank you. But it's showing up in your aura because mm-hmm. you're doing things that are contributing to life. Mm-hmm. 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 Now, the other way is meditation, but not just meditation. It's what we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. meditation and application so another quick example we had a doctor in one of the classes and he confessed he said you know i don't show enough compassion for my patients Mm -hmm. see a lot of day and kind of in and out and let's face it some doctors treat people like petri dishes right (laughs) it's just like science projects 20 20 minutes next next yeah Yeah. oh 20 minutes sometimes it's five minutes right right Right. exactly Yeah. Yeah. yeah Um, but he knew there was something wrong there because he's dealing with people, not Petri dishes. So mm-hmm. he had to work with the energy of compassion, which comes through as a deep rose pink energy in the aura. But then he had to actually be 
compassionate. So he's, he, he made sure he took time with his patients and made a connection, right? They call it the good bedside manners. Mm -hmm. But that they were, and he said, he reported later, gosh, not only are my patients loving it, my practice is getting even busier. Even better, yeah. Busier. Yeah, because people saying, this is a guy to go to. Right. So he had the skill, but he also developed the people skill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're adding, you have to apply the light. Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. call it in, mm -hmm. but unless you're applying it, and if you don't apply it, Barbara would give examples like taking two steps mm -hmm. forward and two steps back. Right. So if you're living your truth, whatever your truth, you know, you're doing, you're not, it's just a nice idea in your head. It's not until it's alive in your heart, right. it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I, I always say, uh, you know, what you appreciate appreciates and what you depreciate appreciates. <laughs> Very simple, you know, it's, uh, what you, it? <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, what you appreciate appreciates. I mean, you know, and, and that's, you know, you want to appreciate the things that you want to look yeah. around for things to appreciate, you know, rather than things Isn't to that appreciate. A good, that's a great point, because that's the other thing we mistakenly do. We look at all that's wrong all the time. Right. And, you know, what the news do today? Uh, if it bleeds, it leads. Exactly. Yeah. Good, it's there, you know. So, yes, gratitude. Gratitude. If people start expressing gratitude for what they have rather than what they don't have, yeah. they're going to have a much better attitude in yeah. their life. Yeah, you're, and that's, of course, your altitude, your attitude depends your altitude, right? You're, I mean, that's a whole other <laughs> I thing. I see you have some. Come, come up with all these, uh, yeah, well, you know, I, 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 it's one of the ways I can, I can learn uh, about things. But, yeah, no, I like that. I like that. It's, I, uh, I, I want to ask you something. Go ahead. Those, you know? <laughs> what was that? You should write a book with each of those little. Uh, yeah, I have some of that. I have some of that in in my book, the mindfulness experience. Oh, you but do you, have a book. Yeah, I do have a book. But you've written so many books. You have another book which I really want to get into, uh, because you know, I, I mean, death is a big subject for me. I like talking as as morbid as it may sound. I like talking about death. I think I think if the more we come closer to our relationship with death, the greater our relationship is with life. So. Well, that Right. That is so important. Right. I mean, right. If you we know, understood that death is not the end of life, just that one point, can yes. you imagine how society would change? Right. I mean, oh, and and if we didn't deny death, then imagine right. how much more we could appreciate life and recognize that you know we've got to do what we can here. But you've got. Although the, I, I do I have to interject. I yeah. do love Woody Allen's line on death. He says. I'm not afraid of death. I just don't want to be there when it happens. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Now you have a new book, right? It's uh, yeah. Heaven and Your Spiritual Evolution, right. which really leads us into the topic or the conversation around death. And that explores some profound concepts about the afterlife, about reaching one's highest potential. And I'm wondering right. if you could provide our listeners with a glimpse into the insights that you share in the book and you know really uh, you know is death for many death is the end of life it's you know all we have is now and we better get ours while we can because someone else is going to get them and we can't enjoy <laughs> you know i mean we got to accumulate and make sure nobody else gets something right. while we're alive we'll leave it to them when we're dead you know, oh, right? I mean, yeah. doesn't that sound wonderful the way you just put oh, it? I mean, yeah, really. I exa exactly right. You know, yeah, so yeah. I'm wondering if you can just share some of those insights. Yeah, yeah. Um, boy, there's a lot, to, a lot to talk about there. Um, Maybe two or one or two. The, the yeah, yeah, yeah. The top um, one that comes to well, your mind. As far as the life beyond. So the reason we wrote the book. Mm -hmm. is to, well, there's kind of a twofold process. One was to explore what the other side is like. So to get a demystify the other side. It, it, it's not really this side and the other side. It's just part of the whole of, of life. Mm -hmm. Just like we said, you're not a physical being. You're a spiritual being. Mm -hmm. You came from the spiritual world. So then there's a spiritual world from where you came. Mm -hmm. you're, we're here temporarily. This is like a school. You don't stay in school forever. And then you go back home to the other side. And you actually know the other side better than you know this one. So energy cannot be destroyed is what right. we're saying. Right. And we're all ener energetic be beings, destroyed. right? Yeah. Soul cannot be destroyed. Life cannot be destroyed. Life mm -hmm. is life. Okay. We may not express it as much or it may happen there. So... But then it goes back to again, well, why are we making this lapse on earth? Now, the other thing in the book, of course, is we say it's not it's not womb to tomb. Mm. It's not one life or, okay, how you live this tiny infinitesimal life determines mm -hmm. eternity. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine if we had to take a test tomorrow 
mm-hmm. that determine the rest of this this life. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but I get awfully nervous about that test. Yes. And I, okay, right? So that's also not reasonable when you think about it. But mm-hmm. if we also un- embrace the idea of reincarnation, that the soul comes back many times and each time is like a grade in school, then we start to realize evolution is a gradual process. And what we also try to show is that where you are, you know, okay, we're, we're here to grow, but it also mm-hmm. means we have a potential for this mm-hmm. life. How far up that ladder are we going to grow in this incarnation? Mm. And to leave this world not only better than the way we found it, but a higher level of consciousness mm. than when we started it. So the other side's not one place. The Bible talks about, you know, in my father's house are many mansions. Mm-hmm. I go to prepare a place for you. And there are places to literally visit, but there are also states of consciousness. Mm-hmm. Now on earth, it's a little bit of a melting pot. You can have, you know, a Mahatma Gandhi, a highly evolved soul, standing next right. to an Adolf Hitler, not a highly evolved soul, mm-hmm. but physically they could be in the same space. Mm-hmm. On the other side, it will be less like that. You'll find yourself in an environment with people of a, not of a similar say, character as you, but of a similar vibration. Mm-hmm. So in other words, if I, in my, or if I built up 50,000 watts mm-hmm. of power, mm-hmm. I'm going to a plane on the other side corresponding to that 50,000 watts, mm-hmm. not 100, not 20. It's not reward or punishment, it's like attracting like. Mm-hmm. So we say the most important thing you can do on this earth is earn light. Mm. Because that spiritual energy you are taking with you. Mm. I'll mm-hmm. take your fame or fortune, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. you are taking your light. Mm. So so, and, um, yeah. so that's a that's very interesting in terms of understanding that, uh, because you know, from a metaphysics perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I often wonder, you know, when we move into, when when this physical realm dissipates, right, and we move as an energetic being, whether or not we ascend or we descend, based on the quality of the light, based on the lightness, the lightness or the heaviness of the of the dark or the light. Right. Rather, did we earn light or did we did we lose yeah. light? And then and then in that ascension, whether or not we come back, you know, from a buddhist viewpoint there are the six realms and mm-hmm. in that buddhist view you know we can come back as in the hell realm as an animal at the animal realm or we can come back as a in the human realm or in the godly realm whatever it is so what you're talking about is really like okay what is that reincarnation does that have a lot to do with the light and i'm wondering you know when we you talked about you know god or you talked about the afterlife i'm wondering if there's a communion uh something that we can do in this journey that we have to really cultivate that light and that deeper connection with the divine well if someone has had their awakening first mm-hmm. of all all souls are 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 here to grow whether you, you whether you, the hardest core atheist is still here to grow mm-hmm. right and there are people that are don't use the word spiritual but living a more spiritual life than those that oh no i'm very spiritual but when you look at their life it doesn't look so spiritual Mm -hmm. but to say what's the good of going to church on sunday than cheating your partners on monday right right so you have to live that truth right there Mm -hmm. so if you're doing that you are growing now but if you've had the calling if you've had the awakening Mm -hmm. then that's the time to really put your hands to the plow and take what we call the accelerated path. Hmm. Well, Max Heindel, the uh, Rosicrucian mystic, mm-hmm. he spoke of the path, the mystical path in two ways, the slow, mm-hmm. gradual spiral mm-hmm. and the straight and narrow upward. And he called the straight and narrow the path of initiation. Mm-hmm. So if you had the awakening, that means you're supposed to make this a high priority in your life. This is not accidental that you've had these. Mm-hmm. This isn't just a curiosity thing like other things. So we keep encouraging people, especially this time on earth right now, to do your best to make your spiritual life the mm-hmm. centerpiece of your life. Mm-hmm. And then everything else will fall mm-hmm. into place around it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very, very interesting. You know, it's uh, and uh, this uh, higher vibration, this whole higher calling, this awakening that you call it is really a a sense of what it's a sense of it's, a, it's uh, an experience con- con- of the consciousness that uh, watching yeah. uh the seer the watcher the 
the the well, sense that I am not my body. I'm I'm really yeah. living this life. Is that the awakening? That well, you're talking about? it's also the yeah. The, there's even though you may have not have language for mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 a taste. It's an experience mm -hmm. of the actual inner life, right? And then you know, because after my awakening, I there was no going back. Mm. There was no going back to the other life because mm -hmm. once you've seen the other side of the rainbow, mm -hmm. well, you've seen it. You know, it, it, it's it's your life has changed. Right. Not an experience. Although some people mistaken the awakening for the enlightenment. Mm. The, the awakening is the beginning of the road to enlightenment. You know, mm -hmm. Buddha had other initiations before the one under the Bodhi tree, right? Mm -hmm. So that was the culminating moment. Mm -hmm. But he had mm -hmm. other transformative moments. They don't talk about those as much because you know, the Buddha, Buddha tree is very glamorous experience, right. Right. you know, but but you have to earn it up to there. And but the goal is, you know, get involved, you know. Now, as you know, it wasn't that long ago in, in human mm -hmm. history to study, to talk about what we're talking about now. You'd have to be in a mystery school. You'd have to be in an ashram. It was not common knowledge mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the public, but there are right. so many people now ready for mm -hmm. this knowledge mm -hmm. that it's opening up to a wider audience and we can talk about this over the airwaves you know right it's right. remarkable right which is uh which is really um uh, uh quite you know it, it, it's great and yeah. and to a large extent however in many areas there are many uh sort of neo shamans uh people who you know claim to be healers but they're really just looking to make sure that you've got a credit card you know, <laughs> and, you know, the that's false prophets. Yeah, the yeah, false, yeah prophets. false prophets, if you will. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm wondering now, uh, the Spiritual Arts Institute offers workshops and training classes led by you and Barbara. Can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, the experience participants can expect yes. and yeah. how they can contribute, you know, how they contribute the classes to spiritual growth? What what are they all about? Well, the, the motto of the Institute is helping souls grow. So mm -hmm. we founded the Institute on all the teachings of Barbara accumulated on what mm -hmm. we call the kingdom of light teachings mm -hmm. you know she I, at first i thought i was just going to be her student i didn't realize she was training me also to be a teacher mm -hmm. myself but it's all geared towards spiritual growth so uh, you know i i liken metaphysics the study of metaphysics to like learning a language or learning a musical instrument mm -hmm. you're not going to get great on it overnight you've got to stick with it you know now we do offer single workshops and you know events and we, of course we, we have the books mm -hmm. but i think what i consider what's really unique in our organization is these ongoing training classes mm -hmm. one of them the foundational one we call the seven spiritual arts so we know the seven liberal arts is was to train the mind the intellect how how to handle the mm -hmm. the challenges of life how to analyze how to deduce how to debate you know all these things right the liberal arts were training you. So the spiritual arts are training you for the spiritual rigors of life. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when life does throw you a curveball, how do you handle it and keep your spiritual equilibrium mm -hmm. and also continue to contribute and create because you're, we're all indispensable to the divine plan. Mm -hmm. uh, I love this quote Barbara mm -hmm. brought in from the higher. If one soul were missing, creation would not be complete. Mm -hmm. So we're not just here to wander around. We we have we all have important roles to play, and we don't have to be the builder of the skyscraper. We can be the baker. You know, it doesn't. You know, the the position itself is secondary. Mm -hmm. The important thing is how you're contributing, and the heart mm -hmm. you're putting into. Are you putting yourself mm -hmm. into the things that you are doing? Mm -hmm. So there are, you know, there's eight billion people in the world. There's eight. I like to say there's eight billion realities. And we're all sort of microcosms in the macrocosm, you know, sort of living our life from the inside out. Many people are living lives from the outside in and don't recognize the inside, the power that they have inside to go ahead and change their life. So I'm I'm a little um, I'm a little uh, curious and I, I wouldn't say um, I wouldn't say suspicious, but I'm a little curious as to how the stool offers a pathway for somebody who might be, you know, Judeo-Christian, Buddhist, Taoist, Hindu, or Roscuri, or Zoastrian, or whatever they might be, and what the seven principles might be of these of the of the. Well, but it, it, so there there are different ways of expression. So the so another thing we say in our work is religion mm -hmm. and metaphysics mix. Say uh, that again. 
religion and metaphysics mix. They work together. They mix. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> They're like two arms of the same body. Mm -hmm. They approach the spirit life a little differently, and the function is a little different. But this, I've seen sometimes this conflict between the two is human made and not divine made. Mm -hmm. But if you're called to live a religious life, or if you're called to live, you know, in a particular denomination, mm -hmm. then your your job there is to bring that spirit through that faith that you have chosen to mm -hmm. partake. Because the, all the gen religions came from spiritual divine roots. This was right. not, they're human expressions of divine inspiration. Right. And if you're called to that, then you wanna, you wanna live that life. And how well are you living it? If you are feeling like, I wanna live the life of a monk or a nun, okay, mm -hmm. but how are you doing it? Look at what Mother Teresa did. She, mm -hmm. she took the vow of poverty, right? But boy, did she change the world. You know, right. Well, um, well, but, you know, I like what Joseph Campbell says about, you know, uh, the difference between uh, religion and spirituality, you know, which is religion is the menu and spirituality is the meal. And, you know, I uh, as a as an interfaith, I'm a interfaith minister. Uh, an oh, okay. yeah. So, you know, <clears throat> one of the things I I talk about is that, you know, think of religions as many boats, many ships, some are cruise lines that all have a sort of ports of call, if you will, uh, but they're all on the same ocean. And the ocean, yeah, exactly. the, ocean the, the ocean, is the spirituality that really helps us drive. And, and what I hear you saying is that along the same line, the metaphysics is sort of the energetic pull well, that anyone can so access regardless like of their religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Metaphysics also does make another, not claim, but aspiration. Mm -hmm. um, so with religion, you're living a lot by, of course, faith and belief, right? Mm -hmm. I believe in you, God, you know, and I'm going to live my life even to my death mm -hmm. on that on that belief. Now, metaphysics would say, okay, faith is the foundation of everything, but faith is not the end of the road. Mm -hmm. Faith is meant to give way to knowing. Mm. So in the end, you've got to do what Yogananda was talking about, Swam, the Swami Yogananda, mm -hmm. is we're meant to, whether it's this life or another lifetime, we're meant to find God here. See God face to face here. Mm -hmm. Not say, oh, when I die and cross over to the other side. Mm -hmm. That's the enlightenment that we seek. Mm -hmm. So this goal, so people say, well, okay, you, we meditate with a purple ray for peace. Well, why don't I just pray for peace? Why do I ask for purple ray? because you're a metaphysician and you're trying to more consciously cooperate with the process mm. that's already going on. Mm -hmm. When you pray for peace, God is sending you to you through the purple light. Mm. But now you're cooperating with that process, so mm -hmm. it's deepening the experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think that's uh, I think that's interesting because, uh, you know, I also believe that, you know, different colors, different views of light certainly have different uh, vibrational quality. I see you have a very <laughs> colorful room there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm very. I, uh, that's part of my one of my chapters in my book is about the environment, about yeah. being able to live the. You know, I, I talk about living from the inside out, but there's also sure. living from the outside in. That if you don't create a environment that is conducive of spirituality, then you know there's a challenge there. As we start sort of moving forward, I'm wondering, Dimitri, if you can talk to um and you know time wise uh you know given uh for individuals that might feel lost or disconnected that are really looking for that light you know right. what advice would you give them to help them rediscover perhaps their spiritual practice and maybe help them with direction yeah well first of all to realize that you're precious that you mm. matter mm -hmm. you count all right so honor the the divine presence in yourself even if you may not fully feel it or recognize it, it's there. And then do your best to take, you know, sort of constructive steps. Mm -hmm. Do something that is either contributing to the betterment of another person's life mm. or contributing to your own life in a creative, positive way. Mm. You know, the uh, the naysayers, the doomsday sayers, the, the net effect of that is what does it matter? Mm -hmm. You know, do it or not, it does matter. Mm -hmm. So you need to take that and don't let the doom and gloomers mm -hmm. punch your balloon, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Right. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to say, eh, 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 
-hmm. Let them think what they want, but don't let that discourage you. What did Shakespeare say? To an I don't self be true, and you cannot be false to anyone. Mm -hmm. So you've got, but you've got to exercise. Sometimes we're not strong enough. Mm -hmm. If someone comes in, they've got a strong will or something's going, we kind of like blow with the wind, you know, and we, and, and in today's world, we got to be tougher than ever. You know, mm -hmm. we got to be strong in our feet and also to know that there is a divine, mm. there is a divine love. There is an intelligence, mm -hmm. whether you want to call it God or the infinite life or what, what words you want to use with mm -hmm. it. But there is this wellspring of life mm -hmm. that is there to work with you. Mm -hmm. Not against you. That's wonderful. Yeah. So uh, as we start to close, I'm just wondering, looking ahead, what are your aspirations for the Spiritual Arts Institute? And how do you envision the impact, if you will, on the spiritual landscape uh, in the years to come? Do you have any, any thoughts about that? Well, it's so funny you're saying that <laughs> because, you know, having been doing this work now for 40 years, mm. it's interesting to see there's a shift that's come on very recently. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I think there's a greater need for spiritual knowledge than ever before because I, I'm surprised that I'm seeing people more discouraged. You know, when you mm. look at statistics, well, things you know, things are improving in many areas, but people think, no, it's it's all falling apart. So our goal is to really get this message out to as many people as we can. Mm -hmm. I know the value of this. I know it for myself. I've seen it in countless students through through the years. I think though we're trying to make the work more available than it's been. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of noise out there in the mm -hmm. marketplace right now. A lot of like you say, they're just looking for the credit cards, but right. they have a good marketing team behind them to get that credit card, right? Right, right. So right. we're not gonna fall for that kind of glam, you know, mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. hooks and things that, mm -hmm. you know, people do. Mm -hmm. So it's a slower road because of that, um, but it's also more genuine. And mm -hmm. I have to say just when you're working in a business where you're meeting people like yourself and others that are on their path and they're looking mm -hmm. the better, it, it's so rewarding mm -hmm. to work with that because you realize you aren't on your own. If you're feeling you are on your own on your mm -hmm. path, you're not. There are others that are on it too, and maybe it's not your spouse. Hopefully it is, but if it isn't, there are others. And mm -hmm. the more you team with them, the more you can collaborate mm -hmm. and support each other in the journey. That's beautiful. Well, you know, I feel uh, moved, touched, and inspired by you, and and thankful. Uh, when looking to have you on the show, and really uh, uh, very, very grateful to have you on the show. How do people get a hold of you or the Spiritual Arts Institute? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're by the way, we do offer classes. You know, we're in Encinitas, California, which mm -hmm. is by San Diego. We have a beautiful center here. It's mm -hmm. a beach town. Water's not nearby. And water's nearby, I mean. Uh, but we've been doing online classes since 2006, long before the Zoom era. Right. Uh, so you can right. join from, we have people from all over the world. And God mm -hmm. bless, you know. But it's basically spiritualarts.org. And then you can learn more. Spiritualarts.org. Great. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you again, uh, Dimitri. I, I really appreciate it. And I hope everyone follows up. Uh, spiritualarts.com and uh, dot org, dot org, dot org, dot org. spiritualarts.org. Thank you. Uh, and uh, really, again, appreciate you uh, taking the time to show up and share your wisdom. Yeah. And thank you for the good work you're doing, too. Thank you. Thank you, Dimitri Moraitis, for sharing your profound wisdom and insights with us today. Your journey from the realms of motion pictures to the spiritual landscape is truly inspiring, reminding us all of the transformative power of spiritual awakening. To our listeners, remember that the path of spiritual evolution is one of self-discovery and growth, and the Spiritual Arts Institute stands as a beacon of guidance and enlightenment on this journey. Stay mindful and stay in touch. This is Keith. We'll talk to you soon.